right you guys so we're gonna start off with one tomato and you're gonna just dice this up you can cut it however you want but I prefer to just dice it up since it's going to go into a rice dish and this is just a regular vine tomato and then I'm going to use half of a large onion cut that up as well and then I'm gonna use this minced garlic it's already chopped up garlic because I don't like chopping up garlic so I'm gonna add a tablespoon to that for the rice so this is my seafood um, mix it's frozen so I'm gonna put it in some tap water warm to kind of thaw it out and then these are the spices that you're going to need for the rice the Goya yellow rice mix some olives thyme and mushrooms these are white mushrooms and they're already sliced up you can rinse them out before you cook okay so first i am going to use about two tablespoons of coconut oil and i'm going to let that heat up then i'm going to go in with my onion garlic and tomato and kind of saute that up just to make sure the onions are soft and everything all right now that the onion has kind of softened just a bit i'm going to add in the seafood mixture Okay, I'm just adding in. If anything hasn't thought out right away, especially the baby octopus, yes, there's octopus in here, so <laughs> I don't mind it. I like it. It's gonna thaw out in the steam of the tomatoes and onions and the coconut oil. All right, you guys, and the liquid that is already inside of the mix. So I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of coarsely ground black pepper I like black pepper well not a teaspoon half a teaspoon I'm not really a measurer so half a teaspoon for you guys okay because I do like a lot of black pepper and I'm just gonna add that in there and just stir it around so it could get all over the seafood and I actually bought this pack of seafood in Sam's Club it has shrimp calamari the um, imitation lobster meat and octopus and clam I believe so then I'm going to also add in some kosher salt. It was a little bit, maybe one fourth of a teaspoon, just to add some flavor in there. And then a couple of pieces of thyme and then the olives. And you can also put in some of the olive juice, some of the, um, the juice that the olive was sitting in inside of the jar. Put some of that in there, about half of the jar of the juice or half the juice from the jar. Doesn't matter, just half the juice from the jar. All right, you guys, so just stir it up, let it cook. I actually changed the setting on my camera because I noticed the lighting was off. And now I'm gonna add in one packet of that Goya yellow rice seasoning. And this is going to make your the rice yellow for you. Just give that a quick stir. Okay, once it starts bubbling, you might want to lower the heat because you don't want to overcook the seafood because you still have to cook the rice in it. I just added about one fourth to a half teaspoon of paprika powder. Let me just give that another stir. And you guys could season the food depending on what you like. You don't have to do it the exact way that I do it because what I like, you might not like. Okay. Now I'm going to add in two and a half cups of parboiled rice. You can use brown rice if you like, but sometimes brown rice could take a little bit longer to cook. So I'm going to use parboiled rice. All right, you guys. So once you have the rice in there, you're going to want to stir your rice with the seafood mixture that you have going on. And it's going to start losing its own water or making its own liquids, okay? All right, you guys, so now that the water has receded a bit, I'm going to add about two cups of water. I use bottled water to cook with, and I'm going to bring this up to a boil and then go ahead and cover it and let it cook on its own. And I'm also going to lower the heat to the lowest setting, so about a number two on your stove. All right, so now it's boiling. You're gonna give it a stir again to make sure that it's not sticking to the bottom of your pot. I would really suggest you use a non-stick pot. All right, you guys? And just give it a couple of stirs if you like, and just to check, see if it needs any more water. 
all right now that it's boiling again i lowered the heat once again it's it's been lowered and it's just on number two and i'm going to put some foil on top of the pot and just cover it tightly so all the steam could stay inside of the pot and this will help make the rice cook faster and make it fluffier all right you guys onto the salmon i'm just going to use this large cookie sheet don't mind my cookie sheet i've had it for a very very long time so it's been through some stuff I'm going to cover it in some foil and then I'm going to spray it with some non-stick cooking spray and I'm using the Mazzola cooking spray this is the kind the butter kind okay this is to make sure that the salmon doesn't stick to the foil which can cause it to break up but before I do that I'm going to measure my salmon on the cookie sheet to make sure it fits on there so I'm just going to cut off any excess fish and I'll just use that for another dish or something. So now using the cooking spray, I'm just going to go over it and spray. Then I'm going to reapply the salmon and I'm also going to pre-slice it so I don't have to do it when it's finished cooking. This will also help the salmon cook faster since there's cuts in between each piece and the steam and the heat can get through. Try not to cut the foil, you guys. All right, you guys, now using some kosher salt, I'm gonna go ahead and season each part of the salmon. Then I'm gonna go in with some paprika powder and also apply that all over the salmon. And you can adjust the amount of seasoning if you like, you guys. Alright you guys, now I'm going to go in with the garlic powder and I'm also going to apply that all over the fish. And you can, like I mentioned, you can definitely change the seasoning if you like, okay? These are not set in stone ingredients. You can customize it to fit your needs, whatever you like. Okay, now I'm also going to go in with some onion powder and apply that all over the salmon. All right, you guys, now I'm going to go in with some ground black pepper and I'm going to also apply that all over the salmon. I love ground pepper, so yes, yes, yes. Now using a small onion, which I cut in half, I'm just going to slice it up and add it on top of my salmon. And you're just gonna spread it out all over the salmon, you guys. It doesn't have to be extra pretty or nothing. Just make sure it's all on the salmon. All right, you guys, now taking about a tablespoon of coconut oil, I am going to apply this all over the salmon. And then I'm gonna go in with some liquid smoke and also apply this onto the salmon. This is gonna give it that smoky flavor like you took it out of a smoker. All right, so now you're going to put it in your broiler on high for about 5 to 10 minutes. Make sure you check it because it can burn. All right, put it in the middle rack. And then now I'm just going to check my rice, which is pretty much done. And now I'm going to just add in the mushrooms because I don't want them to, like, overcook. I still don't want them to kind of be nice and juicy and fluffy in there. Okay. And then your salmon is going to be in the broiler on high for about 5 to 10 minutes. Just make sure you keep checking it, okay? We're going to finish up the rice while the salmon is in the oven. So I'm just going to stir the mushrooms with the rice. And make sure nothing sticks. I'm just going to add a bit more water. This is about half a cup of water more. Just to give it some more moisture to make the steam to help the rice get fluffier. And it's going to be in there for another five minutes. So keep your rice on the stove on low for about 20 to 25 minutes. 20 minutes for pretty much full cook and five minutes for the mushrooms, okay? So once you add in the mushrooms, you leave it on there for an extra five minutes. So now that I covered it and I left it on there for the extra five minutes, this is how your rice will look, you guys.
I just hope you guys understand how I'm explaining this. So the first part of the rice before the mushrooms were applied, the rice was on the stove on low, first on high for about three to four minutes, then on low for about 20 minutes, included in that 20 minutes, okay? That three to four minutes was included, okay? So just wanna make that short, and then the additional five minutes for the mushrooms. Now in a frying pan, I'm just gonna add some coconut oil and make that, you know, get nice and hot. I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of the minced garlic, which is pretty much chopped up garlic already. And this will be for our asparagus, which I already cut up and cleaned. So I'm just gonna add it in there while it's hot. And I'm only gonna cook this for about three minutes. I don't like my asparagus, like, you know, fully, fully cooked. I like them kind of steamed. And I'm just gonna add salt and pepper to season them. All right, so now I'm just gonna add a bit of so, um, salt. This is kosher salt. And I'm just gonna add some of that brown black pepper. Totally add as much as you like, okay, you guys? If you're not trying to take in too much sodium, you do not have to add the salt to this, okay? All right, so my salmon has been in the broiler on high for about seven minutes so now it's going to go back in the oven at 350 for about another seven minutes okay you guys and this will fully cook the salmon if you're into raw salmon you can definitely do a shorter cooking time i'm not into raw salmon so yeah so it takes about 14 minutes okay so about five to ten minutes on the broiler which i ended up doing just seven minutes under the broiler on high and then another seven minutes at 350 in the oven so now here's the rice. I just cut up some fresh parsley, as you guys can see, and I'm just going to add that into the rice. This is um, flat Italian parsley. It's not the curly kind, but you can definitely use that if you like. Or you can use green onions if you like. It's just going to give it a more onion flavor. The parsley actually gives it a more fresh type tasting flavor. And then I'm just going to use my daughter's cereal bowl because it has the shape I want and this square plate that I got from TJ Maxx. I'm going to fill up the bowl, kind of pack it in. It's about a proper serving size of rice, about a cup and a little bit. So I kind of want the seafood to be seen on the outer part of the rice. So I'm kind of adding them to the outer part of the bowl and then packing it in because I want it to look a certain way. So when I do um, turn the rice over, you can see the types of seafood that's in it, All right? So as you guys can see, I'm packing it in there and I'm taking the shrimp and pushing it to the side. You know, you have to kind of make your guests all, you know, think that, oh my God, this is amazing cooking. I'm cooking for my family, so I'm not wearing gloves. But if I was cooking for other people, I'll wear gloves. But um, yes, yeah, so I'm just packing the rice in there. And then now you're going to put it onto the plate. So you're going to hold the plate to the side, put the bowl on it. Tip it over and give it a give it a couple seconds, okay? Give it a couple seconds until you're sure. Just give it some time because if you take it out too fast, it might fall apart, okay? So I just gave it a couple of um, seconds there to kind of rest. And now you just gently slide it off and there you go. And then now I can add some parsley on the top just to make it look pretty and cute, you know. I'm going to go ahead and add my asparagus to the side. And then, now that the salmon is finally done, this is how it looks for the additional 7 minutes in the oven. I'm going to go ahead and put a nice slice next to the rice and the asparagus. Okay, you guys, that's pretty much it for this cooking tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you make it. If you do, please let me know. And make sure you share this video with your girlfriends or guy friends. Love you guys. Bye. Make sure to rate and subscribe.